Diversity and inclusion are key parts of the open science movement. The more diverse the population who can access, repeat, build on your research, the more impactful your findings or method will be. When we discuss diversity and inclusion, we must consider how different factors intersect to impact the individual. These factors include culture, race, class, language, along with other factors such as gender, sexuality, age, education and disability. Each of these factors individually form a structure within which one side is powerful and the other side is powerless. These power structures determine dominance hierarchies where some people's needs are prioritised and others are not. Our conversations about open science, both here at OHBM and also at our home institutions, also function within the same explicit and implicit dominance hierarchies. For the majority of us at this meeting, open science is led by the powerful global north, primarily Western Europe and the United States, while those in the global south have our priorities, models and methods thrust upon them and are expected to keep up. This does not mean that we should halt the development of our own open science practice, but rather this is an invitation to improve our awareness of issues around access, power and humanity, and reflect upon how these issues may impact our attempts at improving global inclusion. In the rest of this presentation, I've invited contributions from colleagues with experience of living and working in Kenya, Nepal, Argentina, South Africa and Bangalore. I have invited them to share their passions around open science, describe some of the difficulties they face when engaging with the Global North, and share their ideas for actions which would help them play an active role in driving the open science agenda in a way which works for them. This isn't a lecture on global inclusivity. This is just a trailer to spark some interest, open some questions, and see if we can collaboratively create ways of doing truly diverse and empowering international open science, which works for everyone. Open science is the future, and it can be a great way to set us free uh, from all the geographical boundaries that we have now. For me, open science means, even with financial limitation, as a student or as a researcher, that shouldn't be a limitation to you accessing scientific research. For my community, I like to create awareness on the importance of open science. I also integrate open science or openness in several projects, whether it's a science project or any other project, uh, to achieve the goal fast and uh, efficiently. If we are open about the things we learn and the way we do it, we can get more people to jump into the same problems and bring more creative ideas to the same challenges. Uh, I have seen many, many uh, open science platforms around the globe inviting participants uh, in the research. I feel such programs are lacking proper publicization and outreach to reach more and more people. Uh, the main barrier has been with a visa. That's the major barrier when you want to attend workshops or conferences. It's a very taxing process, both emotionally and financially. So, so some of those initiatives you just just let them pass by. Previously, I've been barred from joining an online event simply because maybe I was from Africa or I don't hold a PhD position or maybe I'm not a postdoc, which I found very discriminating and not good for the open science in that open science should be inclusive of everybody in the community. My level of English wasn't very good, so I usually got 70% of what people said and try to refer the rest. The difficult part is um, as open science based in Kenya, at times I join these communities that in North America and Europe, they have like advanced knowledge of what open science is, but I just find yourself like, what were they talking about? I don't think there is a global open science practice. I think we all appropriate open science differently according to where we work, how we work. It will probably become the default in the near future. I think what's interesting is to start thinking how the default will look like, how transformative it uh, will become. Most of my engagements in uh, open science in, in Europe have been through summer schools, conferences, and and, uh, and uh, symposium. So, well, I've actually had an opportunity to see some really excellent work actually going on in terms of uh, 
uh, open science. What I like about some of those forums is actually that you actually see how researchers and institutions are actually taking open science quite really seriously. So one thing I consider important in terms of ethics is to always have a security approach and demanding the same thing to everyone no matter what is assuming all stakeholders producing scientific knowledge start from the same place. Societies that up, that uh, share data will be, are actually viewed as leaders. Uh, those that don't are actually viewed with a lot of suspicion. We cannot just leave the excluded to compete um, at the level where we, um, as the Global North, have all uh, the cards in our hand, have the power, um, and have, have, have the system that supports keeping us in that power. I think the first time I read about security openness was from um, OCSD Net. Um, and I think that's the way to go if we don't want to reinforce inequality in the name of openness. We have to understand that to participate in any space, we need a certain level of resources and capacity. So a truly open science project needs to be designed to ensure that the barrier to participation is lower. Good thing that is most conferences are trying to have both in person and online attendance so it's it makes it easy even if i miss going there in person i can still access uh, what's going on online the challenge there is that we should work harder to include these voices we cannot just say um we have organized a, a meeting a, a conference or a symposium and it's open we share the videos um, we share the slides, um, now it's open science. I want to have a community of global open science practice where people are actively reaching out to others instead of just passively sitting and waiting for diversity to happen. It is not a thing that you wait for, it is a thing that you have to work towards. So one of the examples that that really left a huge impression on me is a few years ago when I was invited to go to Argentina to do training around protein and bioinformatics and basic programming. I knew that they didn't need me to teach this. There are people who actually know these. Um, and for me to be there and assume that my knowledge is unique is really, really egocentric. If there could be a model of partnerships where we some of those trainings are actually held here in Kenya or maybe here across Africa, where actually most people would actually benefit. We need to know that the scientists who perform in countries like in uh, Europe and the US, they have privileges like higher power, wealth and resources. And therefore, they don't need to assume that they need to help the global south. They don't need to help. Researchers in developing and underdeveloped countries have better understanding of their research and they have the solution to the problems that they face. What I've realized is I'm passionate about having localized um, scientific knowledge. So with open science, it means scientific knowledge that we'll be having is for Kenya by Kenyans. There's also a challenge in terms of the background of, of people who have not experienced this way of living or this, this societal problems in the global south. So you don't necessarily have the context for understanding that if you want to scan uh, someone in a remote place, there's like zero infrastructure for electricity, for getting clean signal out with whatever modality you want to use. You have to first address those challenges before you can even think of the medical challenges or the research question, etc. When working openly, one thing I've realized you have to understand is the social uh, culture, societal culture of the place. So you must understand how this community operates. So even if you have like global knowledge of what open science is, but still have to understand the communal structures that you're dealing with. I think uh, we understand science as a human endeavor, but up to now it's been involving a very limited portion of the humans in the world. 
So I get excited about um, science when I think of everything we could achieve if it was open. My vision for the future of the global open science practice is, I, I say it is the future. However, it is also challenging. Uh, we are dealing with people with the different minds, but also with the different culture, colors, trains, you know, races, caste. So it should be taken care of very well. Uh, let's collaborate. We have always uh, felt to show our socialness or humanness in some way when talking about country, race, caste, color. But uh, open science is a chance to prove that we are social and we are never broken, but united to solve any problem that exists around. What I would like to achieve for, the, for this community by practicing open science is to get everyone on a similar page where the page is that we are all humans and it's okay to, to show your humanity. My vision is that when an open science advocate or pra practitioner is talking about open, a person in Kenya should say yes, that's the voice. That's the voice. They share the same sentiments. The same thing if someone from Kenya is talking about open, then someone in Asia should say yes, that's what I've been talking about. It's really cool for me to see that people from the global south are engaging more and you, f you feel this kind of feeling of that we are working towards a, a more socially just society, if you see that happening. Open science should work in global solidarity with people. It should offer equal access to information. It should aim to empower each other so that people can use their knowledge to benefit their community and society, irrespective of where they are.